Hey, welcome back to Snapball Games. My name is Max, and I'm back with another Modern League, and I'm stoked to get into this one. I'm going to be playing Modern Tron today, and uh, one reason why I'm so excited to get into this league is because I'm starting my RCQ testing. For those that don't know, they're qualifiers to qualify for a tournament that the next one I could play in would be in Atlanta in November. Um, I've played in a couple RCQs already. I top aided the last one in Pioneer with Blue White Control. Um, but the next one I'm playing in at the end of this month, about a month from now, is going to be a modern RCQ. So I thought this could be kind of a fun little mini series where I'm going to be playing various modern decks that I might take to that RCQ. Just get a little more of a feel for modern, just start playing a little more modern on the channel and uh, just test various decks that I may play or just decks for fun and just in order to see the modern format a little bit more. So Tron is one of my all-time favorite decks. I think it's reasonably positioned now, especially against four color, uh, four color Omnath. So this is kind of where I'm starting. I have a other, couple other decks that I'm considering, but we'll get to those in future videos. I'm gonna go through a deck tech real quick and then we'll just get into a league. This is Mono Green Tron. There's nothing too crazy about my list. I'm playing one Urza Saga, two Relics main, I'm not messing around with any like just members or um, you know spatial contortions main or anything like that. Uh, I'll get into it a bit more during the league when I'm sure we'll face some Ragavans, but Ragavans are not actually that crazy against the deck. Of course, the mana generation is good, but they almost never cast a spell from your deck. Uh, pretty standard, just four spear, four star, four map, four stirring, four scrying, three O stone with another O stone in the board. And then four card the great creator which i think is the best card in the deck four worm coil main most people aren't doing that anymore but i still think it's pretty powerful even if it does get got by solitude it just wins a lot of matchups on its own four car and two ugin two olamog sideboard is actually kind of interesting i have a pretty huge uh, wish target for karn wish board for karn featuring an elixir of immortality and uh, a lot of other staples that you would expect uh, one Tormod script to go along with the two Relics main is kind of nice. Uh, and then I think Gigantha Companion is actually critical to Tron decks. And I think you basically are, you you should play it. You should definitely play it. Um, often this deck mulligans, oh, th this deck mulligans a lot. But if you mulligan down to two or three and Tron up and just cast a Gigantha early, it can be reasonable. Or even when you mulligan you don't mulligan that low. Maybe you keep a six or a seven lander, but you don't really have any gas, but you Tron up quickly. Taking and playing Gigantha is a reasonable way to buy a turn or two. You might notice three Force of Vigor in the board as well. When you board those in, you lose access to Gigantha Companion, but I think it's worth it against Amulet and Hammer, which are two kind of rough matchups for you. This is your best option there. So we're we're planning to board in three Force of Vigor in those matchups and then lose Gigantha Companion. That's kind of awkward. It kind of telegraphs our play. I think a little less so in person. So I'm interested to see how it goes uh, on Magic Online. And then, you know, in person, you can kind of just not announce your Companion um, and then just board in the Force of Vigor's opponent might not realize that you're boarding those in, especially in paper compared to Magic Online. I played the deck with even four Urza Saga has been happy with that as well, but I'm going down to one here and going for a little bit more of a standard build. I am playing the one Yavamaya over another forest. Um, and without further ado, that's basically the deck. There's not too much to say. Again, this is a classic deck uh, and my list isn't that crazy. Um, so let's just get right into round one. Let's go. All right, welcome to round one. Let's review our companion. We're on the draw here. I think this is a pretty easy mulligan. You generally want like two or three Tron pieces in your hand if you can. We have an Olamog in our hand, which we're so far away from casting anyway. This is just an easy mulligan. Maybe before the new mulligan roll, this may have been a sketchy keep, but yeah, this is just an easy mulligan now. We're just going to five here, no question. We're against Yorion as well, so it could easily be four color. Okay. I think we have to keep this on five. We have two Tron pieces. Sure, we don't have a way right now to get the third one, but going to four seems a little sketchy. We have a threat and then, you know, one cantrip. This this just seems like a keep to me. Put back Olamog. 
The second card I'm debating is either Forest or Oblivion Zone. I want to keep Chromatic Sphere. I'm kind of tempted to just put back Forest. We're on the draw here. We get an extra draw with Sphere. We get a green source with Sphere. And O-Stone is good against four color. That's most likely what they are with Yorion. I'm just going to put back Forest. Not the best five, but reasonable. I like this art on Earths of Mine as well. I've won a couple mulligans to two with this deck and a lot of mulligans to three, so this deck can win on low mulligans. That was a good draw, actually. Hope we don't get Prismatic Ending Tier. Could have put back O-Stone for that reason and kept Forest. Maybe that was a mistake. Let's see what happens. Uh oh Feels like ending. All right. Getting punished, but... Oh, we had it. <laughs> Sick. Easy. That was classic Tron. <laughs> that was so classic. I was playing in the top eight of a PTQ in, uh, with Tron, and somebody was like watching behind me. And uh, I had one Tron land in my opening hand that I kept, and I just ripped both Tron pieces back to back. <laughs> And then after the game, the person behind me goes, I've never seen anything more Tron than that. <laughs> oh no, they have it all. It's blue at control too. It's, it, it, I doubt it's four color to Field of Ruin. This makes it worse for us. That's annoying. At least we'll be able to cast this Ancient Stirrings, but that's frustrating. On the play, this game might have looked a lot different. And we're, we're still fine. They should probably not field right now, but it's fine. I don't know what one drop they're going to play. They get a planes. Interesting. I think I'm going to Ancient Stirrings rather than play Oathstone as well. I can play Oathstone next turn. I'd actually rather resolve Ancient Stirrings. And there is... Oh, I thought, I thought that was a... I thought that was a power plant. I think I just get Urza Saga, play Urza Saga. Because that can tutor map in a couple turns. It can start making constructs next turn if I want. Urza Saga is pretty good in this matchup. All right, well, they can bounce the Saga now. Kind of get wrecked. I could just replay it. Can also play Tower O Stone. I think I like replaying Saga and playing O Stone. I mean, we're getting heavily disrupted, but it's okay because Blue Eye Control can't really pressure us, and our late game is so strong. We might be fine. Spreading seeds the Saga. This is going to be a tough matchup. Field of Ruin, Spreading Seeds. The came, opponent came prepared. All right, let's just take Gigantha. Pass. Might still be mixing in some popper, but I definitely want to practice a lot of modern um, just because I want to prep for this RCQ coming up at the end of the month. So I'm going to change it up a little bit here. Ranger Captain. Triple Planes. So it's the Mono White, Sun Titan, Yorion version with Teferi and Spreading Seas. He just Ranger Captain for Thraven into O Stone. Okay, there's a map. Nice. This actually makes it better because they don't have like the blue counters, which are really good against us. But I think I just play map, crack, 
get power plant, play power plant. Another option is just to play mine, play map, pass the turn, and then crack map for power plant. That way they can't spreading seize the power plant. They'd have to spreading seize the tower, and then I'm more likely to find a tower. I'm just wondering if there's any downside to that. I don't think so. I'm going to do it. Pass the turn. I can't play spell that instant speed into Teferi, but I can crack map. They can sack Ranger Captain to keep us off our non-creature spells, but we have Olamog, and we actually will have 10 mana next turn, so we're in a pretty reasonable spot here. Given that we got heavily disrupted. I could pop Osto next turn. I didn't have enough mana this turn. Cost five. I could certainly pop O Stone, but I think casting Oil Mug's probably better. We'll see what the opponent does. They also might just a fairy bounce O Stone. Skyclave Apparition. So they're going to Apparition the O Stone. Okay. If they target the map, I'll just sack it. If they get O Stone, it's fine. We're still at 16 here. I think I want to go Ulamog, Exile to Fairy Land. Then probably get my Ulamog Solituded, gain 10, then start playing Karns or Gigantha or whatever. Like they had the ending into Field into Spreading Seas. It's about as much disruption as they could possibly have. Okay. Get the power plant. Could also exile to fairy skyclade, get a 3-3, but I think getting land is better. Yeah, I figured they would ranger captain. So we cannot O Stone now, but that was actually still a good draw. We're gonna just get to fairy triome. Taking them down on mana is good. They don't get the Sun Titan or anything weird. Sun Titan get back spreading seeds is kind of annoying for us. I'm, I'm interested if they're also playing Ephemerate. Also, this is a sick combo with Ulamog because this is indestructible. Yeah, there's the Solitude. Okay. We can just go O Stone Pop next turn. Again, they're the mono white, you know, creature version. So they don't have. Um, Counter spells for us, really. Another Ranger Captain. So they're probably going to minus that. They're probably going to sack the Ranger Captain to try to keep us from casting our non creatures. But I'm just going to play Giganta if that's the case. <laughs> Actually, it holds down their whole team. And we have on five mana as well. See if they sack Ranger Captain. They're going to. Oh, they don't. Okay, well now I'm just going to play O-Stone and pass the turn. I can also play Sylvan Scrying. Just lead on O-Stone to make sure we can play it. I can play Sylvan Scrying as well. It's not that risky. There's no way they're going to like force a negation or anything. And then I, I can still pop O-Stone. I'll just get another power plant because... It's a little harder to find than tower, because I can just naturally draw one of three towers. So let's get power plant, play it, pass the turn. And now this is a nice trick that you can do with O-Stone. We're still at 23 because we gained 10. So we can just plan to take damage from their creatures and then end of turn O-Stone. Then main two, they won't be able to commit anything else to the board. Then we untap with them with nothing on board, and then we can just slam Karn. We don't care about taking the damage here, so that's why O Stone is honestly so good, is because it's instant speed wrath, so you can just wrath at the end of their turn. We're also going to get a 3 3 from the Skyclave exiling the O Stone. Take Yorion, that's just totally fine. Pretty good showing from the deck here, considering how heavily we got disrupted. Chromatic Star. Right, let's just attack. 
And I can play Karn and Gigantha here. Elk, pretty strong in this deck. There's no way they have Counterspell. They're Mono White deck. Alright, got him. That was sweet. This deck really doesn't, this version of the deck really won't sideboard that much at all because most of your board is a huge wish board for Karn. I think all these cards are strong and I really do like Elixir against Burn. Um, and I think everything else is kind of necessary. Maybe Walking Ballista could be cut, but you, you go for pretty much everything in different situations. And then Force of Vigor, I think, is the the like a key hate card that, that you want in certain matchups and good against hate, uh, like against you, basically. I could board in the Forces for their... Um, and stuff, but I have Oso for those, and I don't want to lose Gigantha, so I'm not going to do it. Relic is like doesn't seem that great, but they probably do have Sun Titan, and they might have some more version, they might even have a Myria. I just because the cycles, I think it's good enough. I don't really want to board in like any of my wish targets, I'd rather wish for them. Could board in like Sundering Titan, but again, I like wishing for that a lot. Walking Ballista makes you lose Gigantha as well. Don't really want to board in Explosives, I'd rather go for that. I'm just not going to sideboard. Reveal our Companion. When it when it was like uh when it turned out to be the mono white version, even though they had all that disruption, that's good for us. I mean, the four color Yorion deck is just has so like the cards are just so much stronger individually. This opponent, you know, is playing the three mana three three, playing Thraven Inspector, Wall of Omens, four color Omnath is like Omnath Renin Six. This deck does their deck does have to ferry as well, but it just seems so much weaker overall. Man, one more Tron on the Tin would be gas, but I think we should just mull. Just a little too risky, especially into hate. All right, we can keep this because this is like kind of a slower matchup. Let's just put back Blast Zone. That's for Sentinel. That crushes us. There's Power Plant. I think I need to just start letting them draw cards. It's gonna slow me down too much. Let's see, I could go turn one power plant. Turn two, I could go forest ancient stirrings, pay one. It's actually not bad to not let them draw cards. Cause if I go star, let them draw, scrying, let them draw, and they just disrupt me, they drew two cards, then they're gonna be able to like curve out, draw lands. I'm gonna just take it slow here. We don't have a wrath yet, and I don't want to just let them draw two or three cards, so. Depending on what we draw, I'll either just play star and pay, or just play forest ancient stirrings next turn. One mana Thalia here. Obviously, you can play into it. Yeah, but then they would then they would be drawing three cards, and if they disrupt us at all, then we just let them draw a ton of extra cards. We still don't Tron because all they need is a Spreading Seas or a Field. Then we get wrecked. So I choose to take it slow, and I think it's working out. Because now I can just pay on all these Esper Sentinel triggers. Nothing good here. Could just take Ulamog, honestly. It's just really nice to have in this matchup. I don't think I need a Sphere. I'm just going to take Ulamog. Could have taken Karn as well, but... I think Ulamog is nice to have access to later. 
Nathaniel, what's up? Meddling mage named Olamog? Or are they going to name Sylvan Scrying? I'm interested. Sylvan Scrying. Okay. We cannot cast Sylvan Scrying. Could let them draw a card here. Go Sphere and Pay. And I think I'm just going to go Tower Pass. Crack Sphere like next turn. I could just crack it now for green. If I find Ancient Strings, play it and let them draw. Really don't want to let them draw. I think I'm just going to pass. Oh, oh, you're right. Oh, yep. Okay. Thank you, Chad. I, I, I just looked at chat too late. Thanks for the help there, but um, I punted. I should have just played Star, but we're learning. We're learning together. Another Oh, Spreading Seas. Okay, that's fine. Just going to do stuff the hard way. A Seiju. Okay, that's good to that's good to have because I can blow up a spreading seeds with that if I want. Let's go green draw. There's a mine. Okay. Not bad. So let's go play mine, play chromatic, pay. Pay one to prevent this. Yes. And also, I could besage you the Sentinel, but I think I'd rather besage you the Spreading Seas. So I think I'm going to plan to just do that end of their turn. And then hopefully we just rip into Tron. I could also wait on the besage you to see what I draw. Maybe that's better. I'm actually going to wait. I'm only taking three here. Because if I draw Tower or Power Plant, then I can just besage you the, one, the other one to unlock. Yeah, I like that. I like waiting. Next turn, I'll just take Gigantha. Probably should have drawn a card with Sphere, considering I'm not going to besage you right now. Ooh, they take Yorion. Pretty scary. Map. Okay, map is fantastic. Because now I can do exactly what I was trying to do. I can go map. Let's see. If I pay, and then I crack map. I don't have enough to besage you. End of their turn. So I actually have to just let them draw here, as funny as that is. Crack map, get power plant, play power plant, then end of turn. I guess I get tower. And then I besage you the spreading seas. Get tower, play tower, half the turn. They're going to just probably, if they draw a land, they're just going to land Yorion. And then. I can just blow up a spreading seas. Might have to let them draw even. We'll see. We'll see what they do. This is exactly why I need to uh, just play some more modern coming up to the tournament because I can't be making small mistakes like that, uh, you know, against Esper Sentinel in the tournament. So they're, if they Yorion, is it, do they target all their permanents with Yorion? The problem is if, if I don't let them Yorion, I've got any number of other non-land permanents 
No, so it doesn't even target. The problem is if I blow up one of the spreading seeds in response so they don't draw, then the, the other one comes back on the power plant. So I have to just let this resolve and let them draw too. Oh, I guess now they can also put them on mine and power plant. So I get kind of screwed. See, they blink the meddling mage as well. Hmm. I also could have banked on them casting Yorion. And then I could have paid one and then had extra mana, but I didn't do that. So now they're going to spreading see these two. It's pretty bad for me, actually. Probably losing this game. Veil of Summer. Because I don't want to get their spreading seeds veil. It doesn't make sense. Okay, so now I'm just going to besage you one of them, and then I can Sylvan Scrying for the other one. Besage you this. So, I guess I should have done it before Yorion as well. Given, I, I didn't, didn't realize that I could put it on both of these, so I should have besage you in response to the trigger. Definitely. Another mistake by me. might actually end up working out for us because i can still go sylvan scrying power plant cast blomog i can also i can't quite karn for sundering titan and i can't karn for o stone plus pop i can start with add green draw See what we hit. Another mine. Another mine's not too bad. So now let's go with Sylvan Scrying for Power Planet. No pay. Not gonna pay. I'm at nine. I think I need to get the Yorion plus land. I don't really want to die in the air to that. And do I leave the Triome in order to kill it with Sundering Titan? I think I do. I don't think they need the red mana. They have eight cards in hand, but we just resolved an Olamog. I know it gets Solituded, but that's definitely beatable. We have double Karn in hand as well. Evoke Solitude. No I'm right. I think I'm going Karn for Sundering Titan next turn if I can. I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 mana. Alright, so I have enough to ferry. Bounce spreading seeds, put it on my Urza's mine, but then I just play another mine. <laughs> Tron has a pretty good Death Shadow matchup. It's actually one of the better matchups for Tron, just because Worm Coil crushes them. There's not that much they can do against Worm Coil. I, I, of course, Death Shadow can beat anything because they're just a solid disruptive deck. But, Grange, huh? I wonder how many Grange they, they have in their deck. I'm going to just get Sundering Titan here, kill three of their lands. That seems pretty hard for them to come back from. Karn, get Sundering Titan, kill three lands. Second Esper Sentinel. I can't. Pay for this for two and one for the other one if they have to. Or is it just going to be a three in? Feeling like we should be able to win from here. Yeah, the, the Grange is fancy. 
I'd be surprised if they didn't have a, a Myria, but maybe it's just never online, so maybe it's just not worth Ephemerate the Meddling Mage. Are they going to name Karn Liberated? Oblivion Stone. Okay. So go mine. So I can actually, if I pay two, I have six, seven, eight mana left. So I actually can pay two for the Esper Sentinel here. Yes. They still have six cards in hand, but I mean, I'm killing three of their lands and getting a 710. I actually have to kill uh I actually have to kill a forest. But I have another one. And then next turn I can Karn kill another land. What they're gonna flicker meddling mage and name something else? They choose to not cast. Interesting. Can just F6, they have to parry. Cool deck from the opponent for sure. Solitude the Sundering Titan. They they're gonna lose all their lands. They're literally gonna lose all their lands. I guess they have to do this to kill Karn. Just get the Grange. I guess. I'll just get the planes. They could get Grange back from the graveyard or something. I don't think it's that relevant, but there's the Amiria. <laughs> All right, kill Karn. Do I have enough mana? I have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen mana. There's an Ugin. Jesus, I was like, can I go Karn plus Giganta? But I can just Ugin here. Let's just go Forest, Ugin, I'll pay. Okay. Opponent came with all the hate, didn't matter. That was sweet. Let's see everybody in round two. All right, round two, we're against Random Octopus. To reveal our companion. Opponent has no companion. Crazy. Okay, this hand is interesting. They mulligan to six. We're on the draw again. Super unlucky. We only have one Tron piece, but we have two ways to find more Tron lands, and we have a relic and a threat. It's pretty close, honestly. If we randomly draw a Tron land, either other mine or power plant, in the top three cards, we're off to the races because we have one redraw from Star. I think this hand's actually good enough, especially because Relic can be really good depending on the matchup. We essentially have three Tron pieces, and sure we can get disrupted, but this hand can also fight through disruption reasonably well. It looks like it could be, oh, I was going to say Living Hand, but it looks like it might be an awkward draw from Murktide. They mulligan to five here, and then they just went double bobble. Okay. Tron land. Well. Alright, I'm going to play a uh, star, then, that way I can draw an extra card and then Sylvan Scrying on two. Map has higher upside if we rip a Tron piece, but this way I get to draw an extra card. I like this better. Triple Bobble and a Scalding Tarn. Did they bobble themselves? Yeah, they did. And they're keeping the card. They could very well have Counterspell here. Another Tron land, but not the one we wanted yet. I'm still just going to jam Scrying, I think. Green draw. Power plant or star? No, not quite. So I'm going to play Tower. Jam Scrying. Next turn I can play Map and Crack It. This is going to get countered here. Okay. 
Next turn, I can also play Relic Poth if they don't Merc Tide. Expressive Iteration. I don't mind play Relic and Pop Edit. Just keeping them off of Merc Tide entirely seems pretty strong. Ooh, there's Urza Song. I like that. I think I like play Relic, Pop, play Urza Saga, play Expedition Map. Seems like a great line. Nice. Now I just mine. Mine. That would be a that would be a good sound clip from uh, Nemo the seagulls. Mine. Every time. <laughs> Ledger Shredder is totally fine. All right, so now we just are going to Karn here. I'm going to crack map, get Power Plant. Play Power Plant. Play Karn. Minus Karn. Yes. I have a couple good options that I can get here. I can get Liquid Metal Coating. I can get Chalice. I can get Sundering Titan. I can get, yeah, Liquid Metal Coating or Chalice seem like the most tempting to me here. The thing is, if Karn just gets bolted, Coating's not that good, but Chalice on one is so good against that deck. I think I just get Chalice, then next turn I can go Chalice into Worm Coil. Chalice. Because then this... If Karn dies to a bolt, this is a lot better. Oh, I guess now they can just play two spells. I shouldn't have played the star into Shredder. Playing a little sloppy here, but that's okay. First time recording in a while. That's my excuse. There's the bolt. Okay. Maybe they don't have double spell. They do. They're not dashing though. And they attack for three. Now I just chalice on one. I'm probably gonna play the saga this turn as well. This will allow them to loot again. It's annoying. I think it's fine though. Let's see. I'm one mana short of double worm coil. Chalice on one has got to be good against them. Sure, they get to make a flyer, but I'll have a worm coil down. And most of their deck, or half of it, is locked out from Chalice. And I can start making Saga tokens. Next turn, I can play worm coil and make a Saga token. Spell Snare. Okay. I can also Scrying this turn. Just play Worm. They loot, sure. They discard land. Could have baited a Spell Snare. I was not expecting that, honestly. I think that's pretty new tech. Sylvan Scrying. Just get Blast Zone here, I think. Blast Zone. Play Saga. They only have one card in hand. Our turn next turn should be fantastic. Yeah, they can't beat a Worm Coil anyway. Okay, we are against Merc. They were on a bad mulligan there, so something to be said for that. I don't even think I'm going to bring in Force of Vigor in this matchup. I think Gigantha is pretty good. I think I'm just going to not sideboard. It's it's surprising how much this deck just does not sideboard with this version because your wish board is so massive. You just don't have an actual sideboard, but I think that's fine for this deck. You just want to stick to your game plan. Let's run it back. Did opponent already submit? They did, wow. 
the, the spell of Nair was there, but it just didn't matter at that point. That was an interesting keep because our seven really wasn't that good, but we didn't know what we were playing against, and uh, it had a reasonable, uh, you know, ability to just grind. This is a snap keep. Double Tron land plus map, I'd say, is a keep every single time, regardless of what the other four cards were. Even if it was all other lands, it might be a keep anyway. Opponent's on a mole into six here. Definitely playing map on one. They could have spell pierce, but I mean they could have counter spell next turn. And there's the natron. Just like we drew it up. Sick. Consider. Yep. I still kind of like Thought Scour in that deck. You don't get that selection, but bidding more cards for Murktide, like if they just go like, if they went Thought Scour there, fetch, and then you can just play Murktide on two. That's so good. I'm going to probably map for Tower. That way if I draw Olomog, I can cast it. I don't think I need a Blast Zone. Rest of iteration is fine. We also don't have a threat yet, but that's fine. Spire Bluff Canal, huh? Yeah, I'm just gonna get Tower here. Could get Saga. It's reasonable actually. Cause then I can play Tower, start going off, then on turn four play Saga into Ugin. Then if Ugin gets countered, at least I have Saga going to start making tokens and get another map. Alright. Sure. Oak Stone. Let's try to find a Karn first. Let's draw a card off the Sphere. Green mana, draw, there's another star. I kind of want to just play O-Stone so my O-Stone won't get spell pierced, and then play Sylvan Scrying. That's what I'm going to do. Also, it kind of looks like I have Veil. Another card that could be a one-of in our sideboard. Maybe even two if we found room. Now it's Sylvan Scrying. I don't even know if I get tower or blast zone here. I think I'll just get tower. Play star. Not a bad turn three. Not a Karn, but still did a lot. Set up pretty nicely here. Another iteration. I feel like this is almost 100% going to get countered. I wonder if I just don't play Ugin. Maybe I just take and play Gigantha. Probably what I do. Odawara. Play Odawara. Play Bobble. I think playing Ugin here is not a good strategy. I'm gonna add green. Draw. Play Saga. Play Gigantha. Take Gigantha. Play Saga. Play Gigantha. Oh, I'm trying to fight through counter magic using, you know, my worst threat first. Five Five's still decent. They might Merc Tide here. No, they don't have it. They gotta have counter spells though. But now we have Saga going. There's Ulamog. Jeez. Kind of disgusting. 
I'll just start by attacking, then just play Ulamog, kill two lands. Obviously the best possible draw. Because I just killed double Spire. I guess I can kill, yeah, double Spire Bluff here. Because Sundering Titan can kill Steam Vents. They're going to counterspell the Ulamog. Charm counter. Okay, I guess Ugin could have resolved last turn. It's not like we could have known. It would have been interesting to even sandbag Ulamog one turn, make a Karnstruck, and then pressure them that way, but... Didn't think we even needed to do that. They only have one island right now. Hmm. Could have blown up the island, but I didn't. Star. I kind of want to uh, play Star and then play another Tron Land. And then just put a counter, a fake counter on my Gigantha, and then pop O Stone. It's a little bit risky, but I don't really want to O Stone my own Gigantha if I don't have to. I just wonder if I can play Star if it's safe enough. It's just annoying if anything happens to O Stone. It would be so much better to pop it in response, kill the Blood Moon, untap, and slam Ugin. I, I think I just don't need to play Star. I think it's just too risky. This can only add mana for our green spells. I'll just play to O-Stone end of their turn if I want to, but I'm also just beating down and they only have one blue source. Okay, well, there's the second one. I guess I'm fine to just fate counter here. I'm kind of flip-flopping. Again, playing kind of loose. Could have played the star, but I think this is fine. Another O stone. It's actually pretty good. Attack. Just play another Tron land. Play star. Path the turn. Now I can pop O stone end of their turn if I want. Also at three. So they literally have to do something or they just die to Gigantha. I don't even know if I, I don't even need to pop O stone. I can just wait. They're just not doing anything. Oh, Shredder. Okay, well, that gets O-Stoned, and then Concede. Yeah, they probably just realized that I had the Fate Counter, so I was going to be able to go pop, kill all of these, and then just my Elk wouldn't die, so I could just attack. Gigantha too strong. That's, I mean, that game alone is reason enough to have Gigantha on your side. We've already taken it a couple times, and we've only played two matches. That was... Pretty mediocre draws from Merc as well. Those were not good draws. They never had the turn one Ragavan. But the decks also, when people cut so many DRCs, it makes it worse in matchups like this because the turn one threat, turn two counterspell is so good from that deck. You don't have to tap out after you play your Ragavan or your DRC, but now they kind of do. Are we on the draw? We've been on the draw every every round so far. Brutal. We're against no companion. We have one Trongland and a map. And then Urza Saga. One Mulligan to six. I knew what I was playing against. I would potentially mulligan, but if this is any type of mid-range deck, I think this hand is actually a keep. Because we essentially have two out of three drawn pieces, a redraw from Sphere, we're on the draw, and we have turn two Saga, which is reasonable on its own. I'm going to keep. It's not very good. It's a pretty bad seven. And I would uh, highly recommend mulligan a hand like this. Uh, but I'm gonna, I want to try keeping to see how it works out. Lead on Cycle Street Rape into Grief. Okay, we're playing against Living End. Living End's actually a pretty reasonable matchup. I might also lead on Urza Saga turn one so I can tutor my Relic on turn three. 
think that's what I'm going to do on the draw, unfortunately, though. I just need to get Relic out as fast as possible to stop them from comboing, and then I can slowly combo after that. Cycle Riverwinder, no land one time. Cycle Street Wraith, no land, nice. Green draw. Sphere, green draw. The next turn, we'll just shoot a Relic with this Saga. We know they can't combo this turn because they need three mana to combo. That was pretty nice. Add one mana. Tutor Relic of Progenitus. Relic U. But I think I'm safe to just... I guess I can play Forest, play Map using my floating mana. I need to leave up Relic at all times. I guess I can if they don't have a third land at end of turn I can I can easily map. But if they have a third land then they could buy one out first, put three creatures into play. So obviously can't allow that to happen. Baker of Waves, okay. Bin Violent Outburst. Maybe they took a land. I think Living End is actually a pretty reasonable matchup for this deck too. Another reason why I kind of want to play it. I think I can just crack map here. There's no way for them to combo with only two mana. I think I'm safe. Get power plant. You always want to get tower last because if you naturally draw a tap tower, but you had to tap your other ones first, you'll have more mana overall. And then next turn, I can just go land Karn, get Tormod script, play it. This is this is a pretty sweet. Uh, draw from us actually just a lot of uh hate pieces here i think they may even concede to a tor a, a karn tormod script if they don't have a force of negation all four street rates they're at 12. it's a lot of things being cycled i could just pop relic right now They're just so far from double comboing. I don't. I don't think I need to. I. Sh I guess I should have. Because if I pop relic now, then I can just tap out for Karn. But I actually cannot tap out for Karn next turn. So I need to just go land O Stone, which is also still pretty good. Okay, now I can just play Sylvan Scrying, get Tower, play O Stone, and leave up mana the whole time. They might even have force for this. They do. Force of negation. I still don't need to relic yet at this point. So I can just go blast zone pass. Next turn I can carn for crit. I know this is a comment from a while ago, but uh, the the ledger shredder is also really good in the Murktide mirror, so that's a huge reason. Okay, they have another land. That's fine. Ancient stirrings. Ancient stirrings isn't bad. I think I'm just still gonna play Karn. They could easily have another force of negation. But I think I go for it. They have to have a second force. They do. 
not going to play stirrings. They're down to 11. They have three cards in hand and they're at four mana. At some point, I probably should pop Relic. If I can deal with a small living end with O-Stone or Olamog or Worm. Okay, so they're... Let's let them cast the Living End, and then in response, we can we can pop. So now we pop Relic. Okay, they're going to have a Strike for Everwinder, sure. Can also just tap out for Worm Coil. Oh, they're griefing us. Okay. Our hand's actually still pretty good, even though they had the extra grief here. The force into force into grief, pretty good. But 11 to 21 card in hand. We only have seven power. I still like our position, honestly. Yeah, all our cards are, are just so good in this in this spot here. So now I'm just gonna stirrings hope to tron. There it is. And then I can just O Stone pass. One mana short of Olamog this turn. I don't think I need to take seven here necessarily. I think I can just O Stone. I'm not too worried about them going like main to another Sharpless Agent because then I can just Olamog. Just not take the damage. Sylvan Scrying. I guess I'll just tap my non basic because why not? Get their red sources, I think. Maybe getting their green sources was better. Unclear. Turtle? Oh, Violent Outburst. Okay. That was pretty good. Oh, and then we don't even get to scrying because of because of the grief. We we get a worm coil though. We still gotta be favored from here. We're so far ahead on board. Our top decks are way better than theirs. They're only on three mana, no red source. We also have a blast zone, which we can like kill the river winder with blast zone. And a second relic. That's pretty nice. I think I'm just gonna go no attack. Cause they could double block. I don't really want that to happen. Let's see. I have four, six, nine, ten mana. I actually can't play Relic if I want to put six counters on Blastone to kill Riverwinder. And I think I do I want to put six counters. Six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I could also just attack, play Gigantha, play Relic. No, I think I like the blossom line. I'm gonna do it. No attack. I can just take three. No, I need all my mana. I'm gonna put six counters on blast zone. And then I'm going to blow up Riverwinder, then attack with Worm, then they can't kill Worm. Well, Ugin's probably better than Karn. Uh, 
I don't even necessarily need to minus to minus seven, but I can. I can also just wait on Ugin until next turn. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna let's see, let's just pop pop last zone. Kill the river winder. And then I think I'll just play Ugin plus on Shardless Agent. Attack them. Okay, they they can see it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chrysalis. Okay. Again, we have our hate already in the deck. We have the the Tormod script that we get with Karn. That was pretty sweet. I love the line of turn one. I had this version of Tron where I was playing four Saga. I was playing extra lands and I was playing four copies of Explorer. And uh, turn one Saga is pretty good in this matchup because it gets the uncounterable relic. Yeah, no sideboard. No sideboard, no problem. <laughs> Thanks for all the, the mustache love, y'all. <laughs> it's the only uh only good reason to to be here because my play has not been uh, optimal, right? <laughs> I know this deck is pretty inconsistent, but this league is just really making me want to bring this deck to the RCQ. It just has a lot of good matchups against the heavily played decks. I have the most experience with it. We just got to find the right build of it, but I'm still going to try some other lists out for sure. Play a little Merc. There's a, I might play a league or two of like a Stoneforge deck brew that I have, uh, kind of different. That would just be more for fun. I'm most likely not bringing that. All right, let's Jeggy to hint or Jeggy reveal. And this has got to be a mole. One Tron land, no way to find additional Tron lands, no relic, no hate. Just It's just not going to be good enough. Okay, well, this is a snap key. We have Relic, and we have two Tron lands, and we have an Urza Saga. This is interesting on what to put back. I think it's probably just Olamog. It's tempting to keep it though, but I think these Wraths are just better against Living End. See if we get griefed. Nothing we can do about that if we do. Yeah, we do. We pitch living end. Probably gonna lead turn one saga again. They have to combo quickly, otherwise I threaten to get relic. I know I'm not turn three troning, but I think it's worth it. In certain situations, I can also Saga for Expedition Map to Tron up. This card's really nice. Uh, this is worst case scenario. I mean, we just get time walked pretty bad, especially if they just reanimate their stuff. Nothing we can do. This happened to us in round one, though, and we were just fine. Oh, they snapped did not take Violent Outburst, so they probably just need a land. Not a good sign for us. Can we just top deck Power Plant? If we do, I don't even think I play Worm. Because I think land, they're going to combo. We're just missing. Oh, brutal. We're missing two. Grief, take our Relic. Foundation Breaker, kill our Saga. Grief, that's totally fine. Pitch Living End. Okay, they pitched two Living Ends already. They likely only have three in the deck. Good to note. What? They're going to take O-Stone? 
They're going to take Worm? Karn, maybe? I should probably take Karn. Because if they don't take Karn, and we Tron up, then we can just Karn, get Liquid Metal Coating, lock down the land. We need them to miss one more time. In their hand, like Foundation Breakers. Cycler, no land. Land. <laughs> They're like, force the star. Let's crack. Try to hit a land drop. Okay. Now we just need to hit any land, and then we Karn for Tormod script. So they need to miss one more time. Cycle Waker. Hit a land, most likely. They do. Okay. It's my favorite sound clip. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. Okay, okay. This is gonna get forced though, right? All right, we believed it worked, but just not quite well enough. We kind of need to rip power plant now and then go like Ugin. Because <laughs> they're going to combo here. They don't? Oh, they have Violent Outburst, so we can O Stone still. They need Violent Outburst plus um, Force if we Tron. Seven drop. All right, they're just comboing now. I don't know if they have 20 power, but they have two cards in hand. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, they double grief us. And they have way more than 20 power anyway. Okay, they got us. That was brutal. Both decks didn't really function, but the opponent griefed us into Foundation Breaker to stop us, where then they just were stuck on two lands, and then we didn't get their opponent didn't get there, and then they just got there right before us. Okay, Magic Online won't let me draw cards, fine. Yeah, Waker of the Waves is sweet. Or Waker of Waves. No sideboard, no problem. I don't think I've sideboarded a card yet this league. Gotta watch out for Foundation Breaker with our Relic as well, so gotta keep that in mind. You know what, I'm just gonna keep this. I think it's too greedy when people mull hands like this. You have two Tron lands and a lot of ways to draw cards here. I don't think you want a mulligan hand like this. Because these are basically just your bad cantrips. Grief us, that's fine. They probably just take Karn. If they have a Force of Negation, they'll take Worm. They took Karn. They go land, pass. Five cards in hand for the opponent. Ancient Stirrings. Love it. Stirrings. Power Plant. Power Plant. Star. Just because I don't want my sphere to get Foundation Breakered. So I'd rather play Star here. Next turn I can worm. And then that forces them to combo, but I don't know if I really want to. We'll see what we draw. Sylvan Scrying. I'm gonna go Tron up. Add green draw. I think I should just play worm. I don't think it's better to wait. There's no way. It, it just can't be. I could have played Sphere, Crack It, and then play Worm, but I didn't. Subtlety. Also, oh, this puts it on top. Top or bottom.
Do I want to draw Worm Coil? I think I do, because if they combo and I just play Worm Coil, that's pretty good against them. I think I just top. Hope I don't get punished by Foundation Breaker here. Waker of Waves. It's pretty bad. Venting Shardless Agent. Now they just need land any Cascader. Looks like they don't have it yet. No land. They're struggling to hit their third land drop every game. I wonder if I... I think I'm playing Gigantha. They might, if they miss their land like one turn, is it worth it to have Worm in play? Their board's already going to be kind of too big for us to handle anyway. All right, let's go green draw. Another Worm. Okay, now I definitely have to just play Worm here. I guess I'll weed on play Sylvan Scrying. I think I'm gonna get Urza Saga and play it. It's a little bit risky against Foundation Breaker, but if that's all they're doing, then I have Worm in play. So I do it. Just gets me closer to Relic if they miss it again on lands. Another subtlety. bottom this now because now I want to find like a wrath or something I can just still play another worm I can't double worm next turn so I might as well just bottom miss one more time nice there's Karn hell yeah now they need force or third subtlety I can make a Karn truck too for what that's worth nice that should that should seal it up because now I can just, they, they can't combo, I can get Relic, they can't be countered. Yeah, nice. Close match, close match. Opponent got screwed, we got screwed in game two, but opponent had real trouble hitting their third land drop. This matchup is tough. Like, no matter how much hate you have, the fact that they can play Subtlety, Force of Negation, and Grief all in the same deck, like, they can stumble on their land drops, but still play good interactive spells that allow them to combo while stopping you from, like, stopping your hate. Um, so the deck is really powerful, but we were able to beat it there, 3-0. and See everybody in round four. All right, welcome to round four. We're on the play for the first time this league. Let's reveal Jeggy. Snap keep this. We have two Tron lands. And they're two different Tron lands, and then we have Sphere into turn two stirrings. We have essentially like seven looks, or is it eight? We're on the play, so we have seven looks. Two draw steps plus a draw from... Oh, I guess we have eight looks. Two draw steps, a draw from, from Sphere, and five looks from stirrings for tower. I saw something that was pretty funny that said, name a more classic duo. And it said, uh, turn one, like, Trongman map, and hey, GLHF. And I was like, oh, God, I do that. <laughs> I haven't had more opponents sigh than when I play turn one Trongland in modern against them. Ooh, is this, like, in, in uh, Urborg? Coffers deck, maybe? Swamp Go, huh? Tower? Nat Tower? One time? Not quite. Draw. Stirrings. Tower. Any order. Play Tower. Pass. We hit! There's the coffers. I'm just gonna go car and exile. I don't think I've ever seen this. Should just probably be a concession from our opponent, honestly. It should be a pretty bad matchup for them, I think. It's 
Spike has this new deck that he just started playing today, Aspiring Spike. Shout out to Aspiring Spike. I watch his channel a fair amount in the morning, like while I'm making breakfast or, and stuff like that. He does a great, great job, but uh, a deck he just came out with today is black green coffers or board combo. And then you play uh, like Grazer, Explore, uh, Hour of Promise, Golos, and then you just play four Emrakul, you just try to hard cast. <laughs> Pretty crazy deck. Now we can just go. These multi Karn liberated hands are just so disgusting because you go Karn minus, next turn minus, then play another Karn minus again. So it's just like you get to triple LD up by turn four, and usually that's just enough. Plus, you just get to keep Karning. Watch. Top deck tower. So close. We're still going to get to Ulamog on turn 5 after all this if we want. I just don't think we can lose from here. The straw was just so disgusting. We just hit. It was definitely a keep, but of course we're not guaranteed to hit. We had to have tower in the top 7, and we did, or top 8. But they even had double Thoughtseize, but we had quad Karn. Which didn't matter. I don't even know if Relic is good, but I don't think I want anything from the sideboard. I wonder if they, they it seems like they're the mono black version. Yeah, I mean, I could have taken out the Swamp. That's, uh, I feel like a little nitpicky. Sure, I'm cutting them off mana. I was thinking if anything weird happens, just exiling coffers, it's going to allow me to not lose the late, the later game. But I don't think it mattered what I did there, honestly. All right, I'm going to keep this. This is a turn four Tron, most likely, because we have turn one star, turn two scrying, then turn three map, turn four Tron. I think in this matchup, that's totally fine. Plus, this hand is reasonable against thought seasons and stuff. We can turn two Saga, start making tokens if we want to go that route. Opponent's on a mulligan to four. Again, I think this matchup's pretty bad for them. So... They have to kind of try to do something. Nice. Easy. Got it the whole time. It is the Urborg Profane Tutor, yeah. For those that don't know, this is Demonic Tutor, but it's Suspend 2. Now we're just going to turn 3, Karn, Karn the Great Creator. We might even get Trinisphere. But it might be better just to get, um, what's it called? The 2-drop. Little middle coating. Tower, mine, power plant. Do they have some way to stop us? Does not appear so. So liquid metal coatings a pretty safe get. Chalice on zero is interesting. Because then they can't profane tutor, but I like liquid metal coating because then I literally start killing lands next turn. Plus I can coating them on upkeep to take them off one mana. But I could let the Profane Tutor resolve. No, I should just coating them on upkeep. 
I guess I just let the profane tutor resolve just to see what they get, and then I'm gonna still coding them. They're just gonna get coppers. Oh, it, it doesn't tell me what they get because it's demonic tutor. Okay. It's fine. Uh, I guess I don't hit Urborg because maybe second Urborg or something. I don't know. Coffers, so they have four mana. Because they can't tap their swamp. Can see. Maybe they thought they could go lows there. Um, but we locked them out of the fifth, and then we just get to kill the coppers next turn. Then they're just stuck under Karn. Plus, we're just going to cast this. Again, I think that's a pretty, it's probably the worst matchup for that deck. Yeah, Trinisphere would have been good there too, but then what? They just cast Profane Tutor, pay, th pay the three for it, and then what do we do next turn? We just minus Karn, get Liquid Metal Cody at that point. It's not necessarily as good as just keeping them off one mana that turn and then starting killing lands on turn four. It seems better to me. That's why I did it the way I did. All right, let's go for the 5 out here. All right, 4 and 0 with Mono Green Tron. Welcome to round five. Let's reveal Elk. Forest, Forest. This is a Snap Mall. But two lands and spells. Got to be good, right? Not in this deck. Oh, are we on the draw? We're on the draw. I thought we were on the play. <laughs> Dang. All right, let's mole. Okay. Snap keep. Cabbages kept six as well. Need to decide what to put back here. It's between like tower. Sphere scrying. If they turn one, if I put back tower and they turn one thought sees me, I can still turn three Tron regardless. That seems good. I don't necessarily need double tower here. Kind of weird to put back a Tron land, but I'd rather keep all my ways to search. I think this is the most resilient against disruption. I'm going to plan to lead turn one map. Turn one stomping ground tapped. No companion. It might just be Valakut, which is actually a pretty bad matchup for us. But if we have a turn three Karn, that's pretty good. Especially if they don't turn three Titan. I guess turn four Titan is probably good enough in this situation, but we'll see. Might also just not be Valakut. We'll see. I, I don't know what it is yet. Obviously, all, we, all we've seen is uh, Stomping Ground, but it's looking more and more like Valakut. Mountain. Sakura Tribe. Or explore. It's scary. At least we're gonna get the car in their land next turn, so should be in a reasonable spot. They can't interact with us that much either, so if we function like this, we've we've been functioning so consistently this league. This is what you need to do to, to run well. And yeah, Fal Falcon Hawk Crow. Um, I definitely know Raptor's Rainbow Familiars list. He's so good with the deck. That deck is incredibly hard to pilot. Um, he's like a master of that deck. He plays so fast. It's unbelievable how fast he plays. It's really, really impressive to play against him. I always, I always love playing against him. He's really a fun opponent to play against. Wish. Interesting. Are they going to get Besaju? I'm still going to get to Tron up here. Oh, it doesn't even tell me. Oh, you can play it this turn. Oh, you just can play any card this turn. Are they going to go Wish Concede? 
You can't wish on turn three. They're gonna wish play Chalice on zero. This looks like just the deck from uh is it the Mox, the 16 player tournament that is it no, is it Willie? Is it two players tested together and tested this against they thought it was good against four color and they brought it and one of them ended up winning the 16 player tournament. They have Ghost Quarter. Wow. That's annoying. This still puts them down a land though. It doesn't tell me if they play it from Exile. This is so dumb. Of course they, they had to play this from Exile. I don't know how many cards they had in hand, but we're going to get Power Plant. They're going to Ghost Quarter during our draw step, and then we'll just Scrying, and then still threaten the turn four Karn. Power Plant. They're going to Ghost Quarter now or during our draw step. I don't know if it matters. Probably just do it during draw. Yeah. Are they going to kill Tower, or are they going to kill Mine? Tower. Okay. No reason to float, I don't think. I think I'm just going to go play Sphere, Crack Green, Draw, play Power Plant, play Sylvan Scrying for Tower. That's all I can do. Explorer is so good in these situations, but we obviously don't have it in the deck. Sphere, crack green. I always like to like do these little eggs before hitting my land drops when I have the luxury to do so. Get tower. Now they need another piece of disruption and they skipped their entire turn to disrupt us. So yeah, they slowed us down one turn, but they didn't do anything on their turn. So it's not that bad for us. Prismatic Omen. What is this, five years ago? I'm just gonna Karn a land. I could Karn the Great Creator, but I think Karn Liberated is better here. Just killing an actual land right now. Just get the Stomping Ground. Because then I can threat the Karn another land next turn, keep them off of doing anything. And then I can Karn for Liquid Metal Coating or Sundering Titan. Might be safer to Sundering Titan, honestly. I think I just get another land, then I don't think they can win. I can also go Karn, get Sundering Titan. Play worm, play worm Coil, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Could get Liquid Metal Coating here, but I think Sundering Titan's fine. Because if they just bolt Karn, I'd rather have the, uh, the Sundarino. Again, this is a pretty bad matchup for us. We just had a good draw. I mean, I'm, again, I have not sideboarded a card this league, I don't think. But we also haven't played against, you know, Amulet, really the Blood Moon decks where I want Force of Vigor, like the main deck, like where they have a lot of Blood Moons, um, Amulet, Blood Moon decks, or Hammer. So that's why we haven't needed the Force of Vigors. Otherwise, we just stick to our plan, which has been pretty consistent. We got lucky so far. Let's go. Uh, hopefully, we finish out this at the 5 0 here. We need one more game. One more game. Let's see if we're running around in game two here. All right, game two against Wish Valakut. Not ball. It's just not good enough. Not too worried about Blood Moon or anything from them. They're a valid hit deck. Easy mole. Opponent keeps. And we'll snap keep. I mean, I guess they could have sided out Relic. 
But the problem is when we're boarding in Karn targets, it's kind of it's kind of bad to do so. I'm gonna put back a relic or a relic here. Keep a, a fourth land, so I can just hit my fourth land drop if I don't draw any more lands. This thing looks fine. Turn three Karn. Mountain go. That means they okay. <laughs> wow. We've just been not drawing it so much. We have drawn way above average this league. And this game is not over by any means, but yeah, we're really drawing above average here. Am I just scrying for mine on my next turn? And then there's no way they can really disrupt me. Nature's claim my thing, it's fine. Now they can no now they can't wish for Ghost Quarter because they didn't ramp on turn two. Surgical the sphere maybe? Feels like what they're about to do. They have a stop on my draw unless it was left over. I have the turn three Karn. I can also choose to turn three worm coil, but I don't think I will. Prismatic omen, sure. Another worm. Just gonna kill a land. Sure, this can get bolted, but still a nice two for one. Stone Rain plus two for one of them is good. They might not have Bolt in their deck. Definitely good to just kill the land. I'm, I think I'm safe to plus Karn here now. Then go Worm Coil, take Jaggy. They're probably just conceived to Worm Coil here. Our draws were just so good. I don't know how they can get out of it. Looking like we're going to secure the 5 0. I just can't think of cards that they could wish for or play that get them out of this game. Because they need to take us off Tron. I mean, they can Primeval Titan here, I guess. But that I don't think that's enough. Pretty good. Two cards in hand. Oh, they have Prismatic Omen. Okay, so they kill Karn or kill Worm. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this does it. They're going to kill Karn. I guess I should have minused on a land. Wow, Prismatic Omen just doing it here. Because they're going to attack with Primeval Titan and get two more Valakuts, or one more at least, plus Mountain. They're doing damage to me. They left Karn at one to deal me more damage. I guess I, lo I, I might lose here. I thought I couldn't lose, but I guess that's not the case. Damn. Thought I had it locked up. Now I'll probably lose the last one too. And Beseju? Jeez. We're only at 24. If they attack, I think we just die. Because they're going to get two mountains, then they're going to have three Valakuts, maybe four. Play Valakut, <laughs> hit us for 9, and then attack, hit us for 18, that's game? Wow. I guess we don't win. 
I think I punted because I think if I minus Karn, they couldn't have Primeval Titaned, and then I don't lose. I didn't even think they were creativity. I thought they were just the other version. I guess they're, they're playing Omen, but dang. Lethal. Close, but they got us. Holy crap. I couldn't think of a way we lost, and they did it. Well played. Because if I just went Karn minus play Worm, then they go land, go, take six. Then next turn, land, Primeval Titan, start shooting down the Worms or killing us. They might have been fine either way. Wow. It's a bad sign for us. Jeez. And they have Beseju too. They probably have like many Besejus. Maybe I should have sided out Relic here. Could have boarded in. I don't I don't think I should have uh I don't know if I should have boarded in ensnaring bridge. Is there anything I should have taken Relic out for? I honestly don't think so. All right. What's up, Mr. Bodingles? Yeah, I thought we had the, the 5 0 right there and then just slipped out of our grasp. Smold is zero trauma in hand. I think I have to go to 5 here. Obviously, what matters is just trawling on turn 3 in this matchup. Sure, they can they can have disruption, but quick trons is what we want. They keep seven. Uh oh. Go. We're going to four. Oh no. I think I'm gonna go to three, because this hand likely doesn't really do anything. Okay. I could keep three lands, or I could keep land, land, stirrings. So it's between ancient stirrings and Besaju here. I think I'm going to keep the Besaju because then I could turn four Tron with a Sylvan Scrying. But any sphere or star is good with ancient stirrings. Maybe I go for that. Weird to keep a green card. Alright. See what we can do here. Oh, I thought we had the 5 0 locked up. Foul hit. Okay. Am I playing the Seiju next turn or Power Plant? Probably Power Plant. They're going to explore here. Or are they just going to besage me? Okay. They have a wish. They can wish for Ghost Quarter. They don't know about my power plant, though. And then we can top deck any threat. Explore. They can't explore into Wish into Ghost Quarter because they'd have to use both their land drops. I wonder if they sided out Sakura Tribe here. Are they, oh, are they, are they going to besage you or are they going to Wish for Ghost Quarter? 
That's what it seems like. I hope they kill Power Plant, please. They're going to wish here. Ghost Quarter. Power Plant. They're going to Ghost Quarter. Not much we know. They're not going to Chalice on zero or anything. Power Plant one time. Then I still just play Tower Pass, take Jaggy Pass, and then play Power Plant on the next turn. Creativity is actually kind of sick in that deck. Okay, there's the Ghost Quarter. After much deliberation, they're going to do it during draw. Another Tower. Don't do it. Not mine. You want to kill this? They're in the tank. No! <laughs> Jeez. Not ideal. We can cast a 5 5 next turn, but that's not very good. Now we have to hope the opponent, when they're like 28 land deck, is mana screwed. Doesn't look to be the case. Maybe they don't have. Oh, Omen. Not good. They they are they missed a land drop. Okay. They missed a land drop last turn. So they have extra land from explore. Maybe they just didn't play it. But again, they have twenty eight lands in their deck, so they have a lot of lands. Second o prismatic omen, explore. Miss one more time. Okay, they hit a tap land. They're at 14. Mine. We gotta believe. For sure, we gotta believe. Search for tomorrow suspended. Interesting. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. Who believes in chat? Damn. That would have been actually pretty good. We can't use Jeggy to cast it either. Okay. Search doesn't happen. Maybe their hand is like all primeval titans and a prismatic omen. Like, how, how many of these do they have? Just so interesting that they're playing this and not dryad. Far seek. Six us or kill Gigantha. Okay, they're killing Gigantha. I, I like that. We still need mine. Any land is Karn. But now they're probably in a primeval thing. Ah. That hurts. That hurts. This is a multi three. Oh yeah, they can't run Dryad, that's why. Now if they just have Titan, we're dead. They have to have Titan in hand. So then they just get Valakut plus any land, and then that deals us 18 damage. Escape shift. Lethal too. Oh man, I think I punted. I think if I minus Karn in game two, I think I, I think we had it.
but this was this was lethal. They had they had prismatic omen in play. Dang, that hurts. My play was a little sloppy overall, honestly, in the league, but we drew really well. I'm just shocked we lost that game too. Again, I think if I minus Karn on land, I just didn't. I wasn't putting them on the creativity version for some reason because. The creativity versions I've seen are either Rug, and I the fact that I saw Wish, I just put them on the other deck from the Mox, but that was wrong because we saw uh, Prismatic Omen, so we know it wasn't exactly the same list. Um, still, good learning experience. I think the deck is fine. We never sideboarded in the entire league, but I think that's fine. We just have these forces as basically our only real sideboard cards. Um, I like the two relics main, really helped us against living in there. Um, I don't know if this Yavamaya is better than having a second Saga. Saga seems pretty solid. It does leave you a little more susceptible though. That's That's the thing. One thing I didn't like about the four Saga version is you were often playing like Saga on two and then your plan was just to start activating Sagas. Um, but it makes you a little bit slower and more vulnerable. Explorer can be good, but I think I like this version better overall with less Urza Sagas. Um, the other version is cool and could be good in certain metas, but I think I like the Worm Coils here. Um, another card that I that I really like is this one. It's Ugin the Ineffable. Six mana Ugin. I'm considering like wanting to try a couple of them. When this card came out, I went to FNM and I just played four. And it was really, really good. Uh, maybe a little less so now because of Unholy Heat. But this card is pretty impressive. Um, especially with specifically Karn the Great Creator. Because if you turn three Ugin, then next turn your Karn costs two mana. But then the thing you Karn for also costs two less. So this reduces cost by four for Karn. There's also a lot of cool lines, just like turn three, seven mana, Ugin, play O-Stone for one mana. You can do crazy stuff like Ugin, play several one drops for free. Um, this card is really strong. Plus, just going turn three, Ugin, plus one can be better than Warm Coil when you're not about to die. Because it's these two twos are good in the grindy matchups if they can't kill Ugin, and this can just kill one thing. But I'm not sure. I like the card. I'm just not sure it's exactly where you want to be. I have some other. I have some other stuff I want to try as well. Like Spike was basically just playing, you know, that like four Emrakul Coppers deck. I was like thinking about what if we like ignore the mid range plan try like harder to Tron up somehow, whether it's explore or kind of maybe more land search somehow. Um, and then playing more copies of like Olmog the Ceaseless Hunger, maybe some Emrakuls, maybe uh, some Kozilex or more Ugins, stuff like that. It's more impactful, but I think this is likely just the best version because Worm Coil does, does do work. And I think we, we even should have 5-0'd here, so tough to say. We drew incredibly well there, so I think that's the most important thing. I like the two Relics main. Maybe we could even play more Relics main would be, uh, you know, not not a bad choice. I'm not even sure. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what more land search there is. There would be stuff like Hour of Promise. There could be... Um, Explore plus playing more Urza Sagas is pretty good because when you explore into Urza Saga, then you threaten to get map and Tron up even more. Um, so Explore is kind of like hitting more land drops, but again, this is 19 lands. The Explore Tron deck I had was 24 lands. It was playing like one of the green creature land, the Hydra, layer of Hydra. I was playing a couple other targets. Oh, another card that uh, I've been reasonably happy with is, uh, not, not that, is Golos. 
this isn't exactly this isn't exactly what I would play, but Golos is pretty strong because when you get disrupted, you can Golos for your last Tron piece. Golos is also a huge threat. If they don't kill it, you just get cast you Tron, play Golos on three, get Cascade and Cataracts, then on turn four you threaten to activate, which is really good. Um, but I still think this version is worse than the version we played because I think O-Stone's actually really well positioned, especially against like the four color piles and stuff like that. So tough to say. I really like this list. Thanks everyone for watching. That's going to wrap up this YouTube video. My name is Max. The channel is youtube.com slash snapbolt. Check it out. Expect more modern coming up and uh, I'll try to mix some popper back in. I still love playing popper. Um, but yeah, really trying to prepare for uh, the modern RCQ. So expect some other modern decks, expect some more strong leagues. Um, just want to do my best to take down uh, the RCQ at the end of the month. So we'll see if I can do that. And uh, we'll see everyone in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.